Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Casper, next home specialist, and I'm a realtor here in Columbia, South Carolina. And what I do is I help people find their next home. On this channel, we'll be discussing all things Columbia and the surrounding areas here in the Midlands, and also providing tips for buyers and sellers. So let's jump into it. In this first episode, what we'll be discussing is first time home buyers and the tips that they can take um, in order to help buy their first home. So here we go. First one, consider all the costs and start saving early. Uh, everybody always thinks about just down payment and how much they need to save, whether that's 3%, 5%, 10%, 20%. You don't have to put 20% down on your first home. I know a lot of people think that. I actually Googled the other day how much should someone put down for their first home, and that was what popped up on Google. So I think that's, a, that's what people think, and that's just not true. Um, not only do you have to worry about down payment um, or what your down payment will be on your home, you got to think about mortgage fees and your earnest money that you'll have to put up right when you go under contract and inspection fees, and I highly recommend that you do that. Um, attorney fees, and even moving expenses once you buy a home and you have to move all your stuff there. So there's a lot of cost up front. Um, people do it every day, so don't, I feel like I'm being super negative about how much cost you need, but people buy homes every day, and so don't worry about that part of it. Um, but these are all the costs that you will need um, moving forward when you start trying to buy the home. So I always tell people, start saving early, even if you're thinking about doing it a year or two from now, just put back a few hundred dollars here and there um, and, and pay off everything you can in the meantime. Number two, you should go get approved. Before you start looking on Zillow for houses or calling your friends um, about going to look at houses or calling a real estate agent that you might know, what you need to do is you need to go get pre-approved by a bank or a mortgage lender. And what they'll do is they'll see how much you're able to afford for that house, how much you need to put down. Um, credit score plays a huge factor in all this. Um, debt to income ratio does as well. I'm not a financial advisor or even a mortgage lender, but I was just going to cover that real quick. Um, mortgage lender or bank's going to ask for pay stubs, bank statements, retirement accounts, and so many more documents. So just be prepared for that. Um, and like I said, pay off what you can now before you do go into this process of trying to buy a home. Um, but getting pre-approved after figuring out you know, what I need to save for and, and, and actually put some back in savings um, is a huge thing is getting pre-approved before you start looking at homes online or even going to look at homes in person. Also, when it comes to being pre-approved through a mortgage lender or bank, um, they're going to end up telling you how much you can afford and what you can pay up to in a house. Um, I always tell first-time home buyers that doesn't mean since you're pre-approved for $400,000, um, you have to buy $400,000. You can buy $300,000. You don't have to be house broke. But if you want to pay $400,000, you can afford it. By all means, do it. Um, I think first-time home buyers get stuck in, I have to buy a house at 300 or 400 or 200 And that's simply not the case. What you need to do is you need to find out how much you're putting down and what the interest rate's going to be, and that will give you your monthly rate and what you'll be paying monthly, right, for your mortgage. And that's, what, that's the number that you should be focused on, what you're comfortable spending, and go from there. All right, so now that you've got some savings and you've talked to a mortgage lender, the next thing you need to do is hire the right agent. That's number three. Um, find one that truly cares about your best interest um, and, and help you basically hold your hand through the process, especially when you're doing this for your first time. Um, when I bought my first home, I had no idea what I was doing. This is before I got my real estate license. So it's huge to get, a, to get somebody that can help you, to be in your corner. Um, and just don't go on Zillow and trying to call around and find an agent. Um, hire an agent that's best for you, whether that's hiring me or asking for a referral or just simply going online and looking at reviews. Uh, about agents. That can, that can usually tell you um, how well agents do or not, right? And, and the process of all this. Um, maybe interview a few agents. Most people go with the first agent that they meet and that's fine. And usually it does work out. Um, but just kind of take your time, find an agent um, and find one that's best, best suited for you personality wise and looking out for your best interest. All right, so now that you got some savings, you're pre-approved and you find the right agent for you, that's when you need to come up with your wish list. And not your want list or your needs list, but your wish list. Um, number of bedrooms, location, bathrooms, all of it, right? Um, layout, um, fenced in backyard. Um, everybody ends up with 14 things that they, they want, but ultimately they come down to location is usually the number one thing. You can always remodel a bathroom or a kitchen or the floors, right? But you can't move that house to a certain location. So I always tell people to start at location and go from there. If you got kids and you need to be in a certain school district, obviously look there first, right? And that's location. So that's what you need to do is figure out where you want to be, how close you want to be to stores, shops, restaurants, and even maybe the airport if you do have to go out of town a lot for business. So that's number four. All right, so we're at the process where 
you're looking at houses, you're going out there with your agent, um, you're getting notifications every day of new houses hitting the market or maybe price dropping on houses that you might want to go see, and then you find the house. You find the one that you and your wife or your husband fall in love with, and that's the one that you want to be in, right? And ultimately, what you need to do at that point is put in a strong offer, and what I like to call a strong ass offer. Um, don't overpay, but bring in an offer that's going to help you get it. And also, also listen to your agent. Um, they can always pull comps to you. They should be um, pretty educated on the neighborhood. And, and if they're not, they can always pull comps. And you guys can sit down and look at that and figure out what a good offer is. But sometimes first-time home buyers, and I get it, I was the same way. They don't want to overpay for a house. Um, but there's something called an appraisal contingency that also will help you not overpay. So the bank, once you get to that appraisal part in the contract, um, they come out and tell you how much the house is worth according to the bank. And that's, all, that's about the, that is the amount you will get from the bank. Um, so they're not going to, you know, if you agree on 240 and the house comes in at 200, if you have that appraisal contingency in there, then you're simply going to pay 200 for it and nothing more. Um, and so uh, appraisals can help buyers out for sure, not overpay. I know the last couple of years people were throwing out their appraisal contingency and it got a little crazy and people were overpaying not overpaying for houses, but having to come out of pocket, right? Given having to put in more than the bank would even give them. Um, but we're we're getting away from that. I'm not seeing that so much anymore um, this year. I don't think that's coming back. I could be wrong, um, but I, I think we're we're past that. So putting an appraisal contingency will help you not overpay for a home. Okay, so now you found the home that you love, right? You put in the offer, and boom, the seller accepts it. All right. The next few steps are are putting your earnest money up. Usually, that's about one percent. Um, and that will usually go to an attorney and they'll hold it till the end, right? That's good faith money. Um, that's just saying that this is, you know, the amount of money I will put up front for the house to show you how serious I am in buying this house to the seller, right? And so at that point, you're going to do things like setting up um, for closing, getting a schedule on that. Your attorney will do most of this for you. They'll, they'll hold your hand. Um, they know the process, so you don't have to memorize any of this. I'm just going to walk you through the, kind of what the steps are, right? Um, but the earnest money, getting it scheduled, and then inspections. I highly recommend that you do inspections. Like I said from the last part is things got a little bit different. And people weren't even doing inspections or they were doing inspections and waiving repair addendums and all that good stuff and buying as is. Well, that's not the case anymore. People are doing inspections and getting things that are fixed um, with the house or fixed what's wrong with the house, getting the sellers to fix before you buy it. So um, here in South Carolina, typically the three inspections that we do are of a home inspection, a termite inspection, um, a CL100, or even the HVAC inspection. So that usually costs around $500, give or take. Um, and those, those people will come out, they will repair, not repair, but they will inspect the home. And if there's anything wrong, then your agent can send over a repair addendum along with those inspection reports and see if the seller will fix them. They don't have to fix them, um, but it, in, in this market, they are fixing it because they know if you, they don't fix it for you, they're going to have to fix it for the next person because that's where we are right now. Um, so once you get all that done, you get that repair addendum signed by both sides saying they'll fix X, Y, Z. Um, then usually the lender will get the appraiser out there, appraise the house. And then from there, it's good to go. If it appraises, you just go to closing. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's kind of the steps. So you're off to closing, right? The last step. Um, highly recommend that you do a walkthrough 24 hours or less before buying that home. There's no telling what could happen. Um, as they're moving out, they destroy the house in some capacity. It burns down the day before. Um, I've heard some horror stories of a few buyers that didn't go, not my clients, but other clients, or not other clients, but other agents with clients, and just crazy stuff happens, and they didn't do a walkthrough. They did a walkthrough and then say it got delayed for a week and they didn't go back and check and the house flooded or the electricity, something happened electricity and they got the wires got cut. There's crazy stories out there. So always do a walkthrough prior. I try to do a walkthrough an hour or two before closing um, just to make sure the house is good because once you get to the attorney's office and you sign off on that house and you leave there, it is now yours and it's your responsibility for any repairs or any damages that house. So always, always tell clients and always tell just in general, before you close on a home, please go do a walkthrough. And that's the final step in this process. And that's a wrap. I appreciate you guys staying to the end of the video. If you don't mind liking the video and subscribing to the page, I'd really appreciate it. And if you got any questions, my contact information is below. So if you want to reach out and you got questions about real estate in general or moving here to Columbia and you need some more information, please reach out. And I appreciate you guys watching this video to the end. See you next time. Bye.